strategy guide, but we're we're doing a strategy guide of this, but we're not doing a playthrough strategy. More or less analyzing and looking at a one strategy in particular. Now, what exactly am I looking for in the strategy guide, or what I'm going to talk about more specifically? is the size of nations and which one is the best to start out with. Most people think, oh, just go for a big one and then you'll be good. Well, here, like I said before, in this scenario analysis of this as a whole with all the different versions of the world map, or modern world map, I noticed how U.S. starts up here for with their capital rather than down here where the fortification is. And that plays a big factor into it, especially because many... Of the nations that are bunched in here have fortifications, so chances are you're attacking some of the fortifications and you're not really going to get anywhere. If anything, if anything, you want to attack ones that don't have it or are not have fortifications whatsoever. But at the same time, they're small enough so that they can split literally half of what they could buy on first turn between their two nations. Now, of course, that's going to be easier to defend, but also um, you're not going to get that many troops afterwards as you're not getting that much taxes and whatnot from a large population. So I figured, well, obviously too big and then you don't have enough uh, troops to arm all your borders and if someone feels like that it's ripe for the taking, then they're going to do so, like here with Canada, right here with U.S. with the border of Canada and Mexico in this scenario. I wouldn't say so much for Greenland, though. As Waters Act as pretty much an economic border, especially early on because of disembarkment fees. And as you can see, I have Cactus Sand here. And I actually played through a whole scenario, starting out with not the biggest, but not the smallest. And I was still able to pull off a victory here. Granted that there's a lot of nations, and you can sometimes get upwards of 50% negative happiness or more going to war with someone, so it takes a while to do so, but you sort of get a break once you get to that brand ruler title, and you can just do the great challenge and agree to everyone to all out more, but that's besides the point. So I'm going to talk about this one in relation to some of the smaller nations. Well, we know some of the smaller nations here are going around Kakistan, which I'm actually going to join in as them, as you guys can see here, now that I've started this. Are a bit of an, are are gonna have smaller territories and they have to defend them all just like me. All of my territories to begin with are borders. Even some of them are coastline though. I'm gonna have to protect them as well. And this one's not mine. It looks a pretty similar color, but I can assure you that that one is not mine. That territory across the sea here. But I still protect and arm all coastlines in all land borders. I treat coastlines as land borders as you could stealthily do um, naval assaults, which I pretty much went over a good places to do them in the scenario analysis. So if you want to go and check out that, that should be the previous strategy guide video I did. We're going to talk about the ability and, and capability here to outnumber and or overpower at the point of attack and how it relates to the game of Age of Conquest 4 here. Now, Russia, on the other hand, this is their capital right here of Moscow. In the game, this is where your leader starts, and what I refer to as the capital is where your leader starts out in. Sometimes people don't even know where that is on the map, and some people think that um, it's wherever your leader is, but I, I call what your leader territory is the territory that your leader's on and your capital is where your leader started out as in like your main base that you started out from and if you play the non-full version it's pretty much everyone has one territory and you have to expand from there in the land grab phase that's pretty much what what your first territory is so I would say a lot of territories that Russia owns in this said battle scenario here are a lot of borders with people. Especially these islands up here, because they have to be defended from naval assaults, but let's be honest, early on, disembarkment fees, like I said, not going to be that much of an issue. But the thing is, is that you could very easily go here into some of these surrounding nations, make alliances with them, 
actually take out the big giant one territory at a time. Now, like I said, if you want to go up here and get some of these easier ones where they won't be able to, you know, throw down a hundred troops that they bought on a dime just to protect it because of the low population, you can. You just have to be a little bit more strategic with your fertility festival placements on the territories and which one gets them. And because I think this territory right here is a good one as it's, surra as it's surrounded by, like, I think, like, Five other territories, so it can supply troops to these five other territories. See, this territory here, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, all don't need to be able to get several hundred troops on a dime to defend it if the one that's touching all of them has a higher population and can send all of the troops to that location if they need to. See, that's the thing here. Is that you want to be careful with how you do that. And usually, I'll get some of them, like, if you want to spend a lot of money on your overall nation and make all of it a bigger population, you can, is that, is a general thing that you want to do, because with Kakistan here, the main issue here, I think, is going to be more impactful for the starting land grab slash landing phase, which actually is, does not apply here as it's the full version and there are no unclaimed territories. This is just the diplomacy and pick your fight beginner phase, starting phase, early phase, whatever you want to call it. And I feel like here it's going to be more impactful to your development for your armies based on your capabilities to recruit troops more than it is to being able to afford them. So in this scenario, which I'm not actually going to do a full playthrough, but I will play through the first few turns and show you what I'm getting at here. Russia, if I was playing as them, would immediately arm all the land borders because I'd do that, although I don't think I would be able to do it successfully as I'd probably, if I have 200 gold to start out with, say 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here. That was five territories. Already has one-fourth of my gold spent on that. Then I put another 10 here, 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 and here. That's half of my gold already. Now, of course, I could go here, 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 and here. And that's the last fourth of the gold. Or so, I think. Wait. 10. Then we got another... Nope, that's about third. And then maybe go down here, place them here. Here and here. So you pretty much can arm all your land borders if you put 10 there and have about 20 gold to spare. Whereas I could put more than 10 on all of my borders and I could successfully attack and roll over you as I'm doing this, although in the later turns they'll have more money and so forth to be able to do this as they're getting more taxes, although it sort of counterbalances because you think you're getting a lot of money, but then again, you're getting it, each, um, everyone in your population as a whole has to pay taxes, so a lot of your territories, you can see, just have the small tent to represent that there's a small population there, and you probably can recruit more than 50 troops from there. That, that sort of makes it not the best thing, although if you want to get land grab and get at least some benefit, whereas you're a small nation like me and any, any expansion is good expansion at the moment, is actually a good thing for this, whereas with Russia you, and other neighboring countries where they don't have a whole lot of territory, it's probably best if they go for getting territory and at least getting some population bonus, sort of like my nation of Kakistan that I'm playing as. Not not the nation I'm from, which that sort of sounded like I'm from there, but no, I'm not. I'm actually from the U.S. Anyway, so let's see here. If I'm playing as this nation, 100 is way too much for one territory. Let's see here. I have 
six territories. So I put 20 in each one. That's about 120. I could probably afford maybe 30 in each one. But my home nation already has one, so I'm only splitting this amongst five. So I could probably put 40 in each one. And let's see what happens. I'm going to use up about all my gold on this. And that's what people usually do. Now, of course, I put 40 here, then 40 here, and then send 40 that way from here, which is possible. But like I said, action points is also a limiting factor here. So why don't we end our turn because I can't do any more actions. Now, of course, 40 is just protecting... Uh, is putting uh, troops on the border is letting people know that we armed this territory just in case to slow the advance of anyone who would like to go in after us early on. Also, because I have more action points, I could go and send messages requesting peace. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to put... 40 more here. Forty there. And put forty here. Now as you guys can see, look at this. They have a lot of territories that they don't even arm here along this border, or let alone here as far as I know, although I can't actually see what's there because I'm not bordering that territory. That was a misclick. But here as well. This is... I can't even pronounce that. I'm sorry if you're from there and you're offended by the fact that I can't pronounce that. I'm not going to even try. Okay. I might even be pronouncing the nation I'm playing as wrong. Anyway. So, now that I'm here at this point... I can tell you that if you play your cards right, and it's going to be a long road because of the amount of happiness you'll lose from going to war, and it takes a while to load because there's a lot of nations and whatnot, and, well, I have a crappy-ass laptop, but, um, look at this! I can go make more alliances or send a messages or request peace. I could go here, expand here, 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 or here if I wanted to. And plus early on, I'm only losing 12% happiness. Now of course, I go here, with all of my troops here, and if and the reason I'm going with all my troops here is because if I take this territory out, this one's no longer a border because of the tree line here. So, also, if you want to double check, I can go here. Yep, I can only attack this territory from here. So I go here, knowing that they most likely cannot put 40 troops or more right on that territory. When I'm attacking it, I feel safe with that. Now, I'm actually going to see if I can get another one. Um, uh, hmm. Weather. And I can't even see how much population's there. I'd probably go for the one with more population. I put that down. And end my turn. Now, if I had an extra, um, point here... Action point, I would arm this territory as it's still a border on one side. And the best part is, is that I'm a closely knit nation with all my territories being connected together, unlike other territories where they own some islands and you'd have to send naval fleets if you want to reinforce if they don't have a high population and whatnot. But I have a big population in my capital, so if I need to buy a lot of troops, 
I can just do it from there and then send them to the territories that need them. So, not... So, individual territory strength may not be good for many nations, but our overall strength and how my, how my stronger ones can support the weaker ones is good and on point, which is sometimes can outweigh the benefits of just having all of your individual ones stronger because they may not be located where you would want them to. And with this strategy, you can eventually get to that point where all of your individual territories are super strong, high population, all the fortifications, but it's going to be a while. You're going to have to build up that population and all that stuff and so forth. I mean, right here, this one, I would normally go for this one, but it's right next to a capital which can supply troops to these two. So I probably wouldn't do that. I could go probably get this one. Or maybe even go here, like I said before, and do all the surrounding ones if I wanted to. You want to know what? That does not actually sound like a bad idea. But I might want to go for some other territories as well. And try to expand in a way to where we have to limit our borders. So that we don't have to... So that we don't have to worry about defending too many borders. Because let's be honest, I go here, and the only territory I can attack is this one. Which is great. Because this territory will not be a border if I get this one. So I go in here with 80, I can also go after the next turn and send 40 there without actually having to buy more troops. And that saves me an action point, which I could spend on, you know, diplomatic... Um, stuff such as uh, requesting uh, peace to my neighbors if they want peace. If they don't, I'll offer an alliance. Maybe they're looking for someone who might want to assist them down the line in battle. You don't know. But my main point here is that this strategy I'm using and focusing on is about your nation as a whole and how it develops being able to supply more troops where they're needed to territories that can't do it themselves. If you think about it, maybe not the... Maybe there are many countries as a whole that are self-sufficient, but if you take a small part of that country, that small part itself may not be self-sufficient, as maybe there are certain issues that it can't handle and it needs to import certain things to take care of those issues from other areas of said country. I can say the same... And I'm not saying any country in particular has these issues. I I didn't bother to look into that as I'm just talking about the strategy here of this game. So now, normally I would go here and go here, but they have an army coming after me. Now, I want to quell this army as well. So I think I'm going to go here. I can only buy 20 troops. 26. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to get rid of that and send that there. Send my 40 here. And then I'm done. Also, by declaring war on on other nations surrounding you, you have to, you'll lose happiness, but you can make up for that by increasing happiness. It's not going to cost you as much to spend to increase the pa happiness of your population as a whole because you have a smaller population, which is also another benefit here. I wouldn't be surprised, which I'm not, that the U.S. has lost some territory here, I wouldn't be surprised if Cuba gets a big, takes a chunk out of the U.S. or Haiti here, or even some of these bigger nations down here in South America as well. Anyway, I'm going to get back to this, and we go into our battle phase. I did take out that tour ter territory. was not expecting to. I just wanted to get um, as many troops as I could to stop their attack. Now I'm going to send the 40 here to here. And go here. 
and send this 40 to this border here. Now you see, I was able to expand already in the course of a few turns, turn six, in about each turn, I got a new territory as I as I have three new territories. I don't know. Did I start off with this one? I can't remember. Yes, I did. So, turn five, I have five new... Turn six, actually, according to that thing. I miscounted. I already have five new territories. I've almost doubled the size of my... Uh, almost increased the size of my... Um, of my nation by a third, not double. By, by one third. By one third, so... I start out with six, uh, six territories, so I got a third plus another, it's almost two thirds increased in, in size, I guess, I don't know, six, so three is half, so almost, e whatever, almost like two thirds increase from what I previously had. Doubt that, I don't know, I'm not going to do the math. In a simple amount of time. So, I believe, later down the line, I will be able to conquer and get all of Russia, maybe other enemies that I choose to fight with, for the expansion here of my nation. I'm actually going to send him another request for an alliance. They seem relentless to, uh, they don't seem too happy about giving me one. I'm actually going to, uh, offer help. 25 thing is decreased, so. Well, if I send him 20, that's just going to be 15, whatever. That thing throws me off a lot. Anyway, this nation was attacked because I lost some troops there. I put that there. And you want to know what? I now... I now can pretty much freely move this unit here. As this is no longer a border if I take this out successfully. So now I'm gonna end my turn. It's gonna take a while to load, but... I feel like now that I've ended my turn and played through, like, a l how many turns? I played through to turn eight, and I've expanded a lot more than some of these other territories that have probably started out with one na with one territory in their nation. Or even, I think France lost one here, but they gained some down here, and so forth. You can see some nations expand, some nations lose territory, but I've been steadily not been losing some and gaining some, but steadily gaining territory without loss of any territory because of the size and the location and the placement of my capital and where it is allowed me to do this. Not just because... One day, one territory in my nation was strong, but because that nation, that one territory in my uh, nation that's strong, was able to support and be able to help the others around it as well. And that, I think, makes a good strategy, which I have not really considered what I want to call this. I'll call it the small nation strat. That sounds like a good name, small nation strat. For this strategy guide and how it can affect people how it can affect the people around your nation and how it works for this for this scenario and I'm pretty sure you could apply this 
to many other scenarios. I just thought this was the best one for demonstration to show you, but if you have any other full nation ones, you can definitely try it as well. Um, any other ones I'd recommend would probably be small nations, six to seven territories big. No more, no less than four. You should probably be good, but if it's too big, then you're going to deal with a lot of coastline and a lot of issues bordering your, covering all your borders and whatnot. Six, I found, was a good, good balance between them. I feel like, now that I've gone over a strategy that I sort of developed, not, not too keen on the new, on the small nation strategy, but that's what I'm going with. Anyway... Hope you guys enjoyed watching this strategy guide. If you did, take the time to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below. It would be highly appreciated, and I will see you guys later in another video. Bye-bye!